Today my guests are Jesse Liberty and John Galloway. Jesse. Good to be here. John, thanks for coming. Yeah. I'm excited because you guys are two of my favorite podcasters. I okay. subscribe to both your podcasts. They're awesome. <laughs> You're the one. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not just sucking up to you guys. I'm, I'm serious. I really like it a lot. Um, and uh, I did. I enjoyed the session you just did here at Stir Track. Uh, tell me about the session real quick. What was uh, what were you trying to show? Uh, we were trying to show that you should always test your application. That's in the right. Movie. That's all about the good part. Not the part okay, the right, right. Um, there was no internet connection. That's what <laughs> right. the broke. So we were, uh, Jesse and I have been working since late October on an application. We both work for Microsoft in the development developer guidance group, mm -hmm. and we focus on one feature. So I work on like web programming, and Jesse works on phone and Silverlight, and kind of, and so we said, you know what, let's build an app that hooks these parts together. Mm -hmm. So, so, and by doing that, partly we wanted to learn from each other, learn, you know, pair program and learn just features, but also just learn information yeah, from each other. Yeah, you guys work on different stacks, at least uh, exactly. based on the podcast. You do a lot of Silverlight, you do a lot of web uh, NPC stuff. Yep, yep. So this was kind of an excuse to do that, really. Oh. And so we were giving kind of a report, you know, <laughs> here's where we are, here's what we learned, here's what didn't go well, here, you know, that kind of thing. So we showed a Windows phone application talking to an MVC um, web server and, and you know, talking back and forth and showing how the applications work. Okay. And, uh, and where do you live? I'm in San Diego. And you live and in I'm in Massachusetts. Okay, those are close to each other, right? Yes, right, right, right next to each other. They're, they're 2,000 miles apart. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's been Were you in the, the same fun. room the, when you did this? Did you we, no, we did not. We've done all of the development by Skype and using a program called Makogo, which allows you to share screens. Let's, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. That's I don't know if you've met, this is uh, Jesse. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you look like. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, talk about Makoko. What does that do? Makoko lets you uh, open up a screen so I can show my screen and John can look at my screen. And I can type and he can point out things. Or I can hand control over to him okay. and he can take over my computer. Or I can drop to, do a different drop down and we flip over to his computer and vice versa. So it lets you do all that screen sharing. And it's it's a free service. It's a, it's really quite great. And, okay. uh, if you're familiar, there's also like it's like Microsoft Shared View. Uh -huh. um, there were some advantages. We looked. We tried some different things at the beginning, and it ended up that that Makogo is very actively updated and and just very lightweight install, and just seemed to work really well for us. So. Hmm. That's when you got to the code. You have to type, have to type in some C sharp, type in some XAML. Then you're you're looking at each other as you're typing. And yeah. Right. Like what we did was we set up standing reservations with each other for a couple hours at a time. We didn't always keep them, but you know we had them marked off. And then we'd initiate with a Skype phone call and bring up Makogo, and so we could see each other and we could see the screens, and if the communication wasn't perfect, we'd kill our video, but we could at least hear each other and see the screens at the same time, and, and it worked out quite well. And uh, some of the time we would do work independently and then report back to each other. Some of the time we were doing real pair programming some of that we actually videotaped. Sometimes we videotaped to the more of the, let me show you what I've got. Yeah. And all of that's up on Channel 9. Um, and in fact, we owe at this point to, to do another one for Channel 9. Okay, yeah, I'll yeah. give you a link to that later. I'll put it in the show notes. Sorry, great. Uh, what's, uh, what about the, uh, the start of it? You, did you do any design up front, or was this just cowboy? You group? know, it was mostly, I, I mean, we talked over here's the idea of what we want to accomplish. And then we thought we, had some simple parts. You know, we, we actually thought we were building, I think, we thought we were building a simple app. Okay. So I was like, I know NBC pretty well. I'm reasonably familiar. I'm pretty sure we can hook up some WCF thing. Jesse knows the phone. What could go wrong, you know? Yeah, <laughs> open the pod bay doors now. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, it was, I think we, we found that the parts that we knew went fairly easily, the, right. but we were surprised in some of the interconnections. And some okay. of that was because we were using CTPs and beta builds and, you know, really mm -hmm. bleeding edge was part of the problem. And part of the problem was that there was just, there were just certain areas of fuzziness where neither of us really knew that particular part. Sure, and then you had to work through it with the added distraction of being right. separate. Well, you need to find a specialist, you know. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Uh, so, but uh, I want to back up, because even if I, what I do is do an application, even if it's a very simple application, even if I'm the only person on it, I always whiteboard. You, you know, maybe on a piece of paper, maybe on uh, on a real whiteboard. You, you didn't go through that process. Well, I think we more talked it over. I mean, verbally. We, we had some we, sense of what things were going to look. Well, now, when you say you're talking about the UI or the architecture, the, everything. Well, the yeah, both. I think the UI is probably easier because you can. There is a designer for the UI, yeah. and you can just drag and drop things. But the architecture, right. um, I find myself, as I say, even myself, I want to draw that picture. 
Mm -hmm. And if there's somebody there, it's better still. I can point to things. Right. right. One of the things that I like to say when I do presentations these days is that I used to call it winging it. Now I call it emerging design. It sounds much better. <laughs> but but so it, a name for it. To, right. a, to a large I'll degree, I think the design emerged as we went. Okay. You know, but a lot of it, it sounds completely insane to do that, but we had one model class. We had an MVC application that had like a few forms, and we had no data service. So at least on the server side, not a whole lot of moving, it didn't like sound yeah. like a lot of moving parts. Of course, over time, then we said, well, for testability, we want to abstract to an interface, or to a repository, and we want to do this, and so over time, it... So that complexity came out as you were doing your development. Right. Okay. Right. And I've, yeah. I've done that too as well. And yeah. one of the things that happened recently as we were preparing for this talk is that I thought to myself, you know, we started in October and it's May, and, you know, what have we been doing, and how much have we accomplished? Well, when we actually sat down and added up the number of hours that we worked on this, and I'm talking individually, not collectively, when you add John's hours plus my hours, it came out to about 200 hours, about two and a half weeks. If we had worked on this steadily for two weeks, we'd probably be about where we are. Mm -hmm. And given that, it went pretty quickly. Okay. Because we, you know, we have an app in the marketplace. It's not a finished app, but it's an app that made it into the marketplace, so it's good, in, you know, it's, it's crossed that bar, and there's more to do on it. And the NBC side is pretty solid, and there's more to do there, but, you know, we had a pretty good robust start to what we wanted to accomplish. Along the way, we were able to produce a number of uh, videos and a number of uh, tutorials. So uh, I, don't, I, don't, I feel like I'm sounding a little defensive, but more I just feel like this project actually... Stop, stop yeah. for a minute and kind of reflect and say, let's, yeah. let's write down what we did or capture what we did in the video. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, so it turns out that I think that um, it's gone... In some ways, it succeeded my expectations, and yeah. and I will tell you, it was a, it's been a blast, and I'm sure. eager to you know continue it or roll it up into another related project. But uh, definitely, I think that this has been a, a great experience. And you guys are running the same code base. Uh, we are. So, so we you're use, zipping up the files. And oh yeah. Them to each other? Yeah, we just email them. It's <laughs> no problem. Uh, we use Mercurial, okay. and we're on Bitbucket. So um, that's been something where you know again, a lot. A lot of the um, work that we do, we'll be working on like tutorials and things where there's not a whole lot of. It's a, I'm one person working on the code, and so uh -huh. this was nice to have a project where we were working together, sure. you know, cross country and all that. And Mercurial, I think, has worked really well. For Mercurial's us. worked really well, and I, um, John recently found an article by Joel Spolsky about yeah. how to use Mercurial well and how to branch and merge and, you know, really take advantage of Mercurial, and that I think has really kicked up a notch of our. Of our comfort level and our use with it, and that um, Mercurial's turned out to be okay. quite good. Mercurial is a, it's a distributed uh, source control system. Exactly. Is that is there a reason you didn't go with TFS? I know you both work for Microsoft. Well, I think more light. We were looking for something really lightweight, mm -hmm. and um, we like the idea of the distributed. We like the frequent uh, check-ins that are not necessarily rolled up to the server. Okay. And uh, really looking lightweight. The other thing is, I think that we went out of our way from uh, in this to take a alt .net -y kind of approach that said, you know, what's what's the best, what's the easiest, what, what are we already comfortable with, what's open source, and try to, you know, when we talked about the full stack, the whole .net stack, we also were really interested in, and what other pieces fit with that and go with that, and what can we take advantage of? One thing, too, is with um, with Mercurial, we're using Bitbucket for, for the hosting, and that's free. Okay. So that's that was not you know we didn't need to worry about setting up or finding a TFS hoster and pay, you know so we're actually not paying any money for any of this and sort of it is kind of the idea of if we were doing a startup or if we were doing this as an open source project on our weekends right. you know we wouldn't have the advantage maybe of a lot of money to dump in we don't have the advantage right. of a lot of and, money and also this the whole idea of this thing was to be in some ways a learning experience not just for us but for folks who are reading our blog and right. we really didn't want to have to turn to somebody and say here's the cost of entry we were looking for a way to be able to say these tools are free the the services we're using are free and so a mindset evolved that said let's look at how you would do this if we were two guys doing a startup sure because you kept an open mind about that that's great um what was the hardest part of it Working with John. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's same answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I think the hardest part was just we would run into things where we would just be stuck. You know, like the, I think mm -hmm. the phone um, getting through the phone marketplace uh, approval was was tricky because you know it worked on the emulator, great. Or all our test pass, the phone works great. Dump it on Jesse's phone, boom, 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 it all works, and then we send it off for for approval and the marketplace approval just basically said 
didn't work. Crash it. You know, five out of five. And it was just like, you what is going on? Just were some other shit. Right, yeah, right. No, couldn't. But, but we learned some about debugging the phone, and we learned some about, and you know, there was one requirement where they said, well, that when you're doing the authentication, there's a pause, and, and the requirements for, for the marketplace are that if there's a, a more than a second, that you have to give the user the option to cancel, and that you have to show a progress thing and a couple other things. And, and, and by that point, we were pretty begrudging, to be totally honest, mm -hmm. and you know, are, are, okay, fine, we'll do that. Well, it made for a much better app. Right. I mean, it really absolutely did, and I'm, and I'm really quite pleased at how, and it wasn't hard. I mean, it, it right. took us like an hour. So as soon as we it. did it, we were like, oh, yeah, this is beautiful. You know, and up, up till then, it was like, ah, it's good right. enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were right. Yeah. So I think the hardest part was, as you say, there were times that we would run into a brick wall of our own knowledge. And in fact, what we learned was that we would put something up, we'd bing it on Google, we'd Google it on Bing, whatever the right verb is, we'd bingle it. <laughs> and, and a lot of the time, that's where we got the answer. And then the fallback from that was we put it up on the forums or Stack Overflow. And then every once in a while we take advantage of the fact that we have buddies at Microsoft. So mm -hmm. you know, we could ask a question here and there. It's that whole thing where it's, it's easy enough to find somebody that knows ASP.NET MEC. And it's easy enough to find somebody that works you know, maybe with OData. But to find somebody that knows both, right. the exact way we're using it, a tiny little bit, you know, right. and the same thing. I, it's easy enough to find someone who does maybe phone development, but also has looked at distributed authentication systems. Uh, tiny so little. You guys are those right, exactly. There you go. We, we ended up. There was one point where we thought. we had all this trouble figuring out how to get WCF data services working with Entity Framework code first, and and getting an OData feed that a phone could read. We ran into this weird edge case where we we're like, this doesn't work. And so finally, we figured it out, and we wrote up a series of blog posts that said, "If you're trying to do this, follow these steps." You know, because it's just yeah, it this turned out to be a real edge case. Yeah. And, and I was reminded of that that great Doonesbury where he goes to use the Xerox machine, and and it spits the paper out and goes crackle thwap, and it goes flying, and he walks up to the secretary and she says, "Well, did you turn qu crackle thwap off?" <laughs> you know, and there was a certain amount of turning crackle thwap off yeah. that you know we had to do. Yeah. And, uh, so is the app available? Uh, to the rest of us? It is. If you go to the marketplace and search for who space is space that, who is that, who is that? and uh, it's not by any means finished, but uh -huh. it's out in the marketplace and you can get a sense of you know, what, where we're heading. Mm -hmm. And I thought I heard you guys commit to that you're going to keep on developing this. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to keep on developing. And I'm not sure about the this part. Well, you know, we're looking very seriously at A, can we open sources, B, what do we mean by finished, and C, okay. how can we grow this project into more areas and more explorations because we're beginning to understand what we're doing and that's too frightening so we yeah. really need to push on those limits. I just realized I never asked you what the app does. All oh, right. The goal of the app is that you meet somebody at a conference or somewhere and you say and you put in their name and you put in their description. We have drop downs for you know are they tall are they short what we'll color hair how long is their hair all these different descriptive things Snap possibly picture, take a picture yeah. and then when uh, you can either use it for memorizing those names or if, you, if you're trying to remember like who is that short ball guy from Microsoft who I met at, uh, you know, at, at uh, Stir Trek. I don't think I know anybody. Yeah, exactly. Answer. There's nobody comes to mind and so you would look it up and it would pop up and it would show you. Uh, it's really kind of a panic thing, right? You run in, you're like, right. oh shoot, yeah. I, should, this guy's over there. Who, 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 oh, hi, buddy. Exactly. That's <laughs> both of us. Well, like, yeah, I need it all the that. time. So, <laughs> I mean, it really came out of a real felt need, which is always better when technology comes out of a need rather than you build it and then say, what are we going to do with it? So. And that did drive a cool thing, I think, about the design, which is that it's very forgiving both in the entry and search. So you can just say, Jim, bald, you're done. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't, there's, Required fields are basically you just need to enter a name, and it can be well to save it. You need a first and last name. To to search, you don't need anything. You can you can leave it all blank and get everybody. Yeah. Or you can put in one thing like you know, you blue eyes. You'll get everybody who has blue eyes. Or mm -hmm. Whatever you know, however you want to do that. Now, one of the things that we would like to do down the road is tie this into your contacts, possibly tie it into your Facebook acquaintances. I mean, there's a lot of you could build this thing indefinitely. Right. How far we'll go with that is an open question. But, but then if it's open source, maybe other people too can. That would be great. Them. I would love that. Yeah. That always Of course, works. then they'd have to look at our code, which is very <laughs> scary. That's the whole point. Anything else to add? No, it's been, I get to say it's been a blast. And pair programming is a great thing. I'm really I totally it. committed to it and convinced of it, that it's a valuable thing to do. Yeah. You're going to the airport, and uh, where are you speaking next? Where am I speaking next? I'm doing the uh, Windows Home from Scratch presentation on... What's today? Friday? Friday yes. I think tomorrow or the next oh, day in, in, in Boston. <laughs> and then I'm, well, let's see, I'm going to be in Montreal at the end of the month. Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to be in Sofia in October. 
I don't know where Oscar Fudge Johnson was. Really all you, the it's not, it, last year was crazy for me. I was all over the, the world. I went to India and all these places I'd never been to before. Um, I, it's pretty free for me up through, I think, DevLink. I think we're talking we're about this. I think I'll we're talking, there. yeah. Oh, I'm going to DevLink. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> through, you please show up. I just got to do that. I just got to do that like uh, a week ago. Good. Great. All we'll right. Why don't we do part two? Thanks yeah. a lot. Thank really you. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. I was really excited about the XML technology, but now I don't have any friends.